thank you for registering. In preparation for the masterclass, I have a short video. Okay, this short video will come after this particular video, which will give you the full picture of where you sit in the big picture of how life works. So if you've seen this going on behind me or you've had different experiences and you think, mm, I'm not quite understanding where all this fits in. Where do all these things that I'm interested fit in? And how do I fit into that big picture? Well, you're about to find out because this video that you're about to look at will show you very quickly why you, you in particular, are attracted to spiritual growth and where all of those things that you're interested in click in to different aspects of your life and your journey in terms of life purpose. So if you like the video that you're about to see <laughs> and my style, then follow the instructions at the end of the video. But in the meantime, enjoy where you fit in to the big picture. To help you understand where you can put place in your mind enlightenment, I am going to show you through the tree of life how that works and where exactly enlightenment sits as far as your thinking is concerned and being able to put that picture in your mind into perspective. So if we have a look at it as far as the tree of life is concerned, this is how it sits. So if you look at your screen, you can see across um, where the, just above the 110 is where the astral sits. Now this is the area that we would associate or I associate as the big donut in the sky. This is the place of which we pull information. Okay, this is the place where we pull information in an intuitive way. This is the part that you pull upon when you know who's on the phone before you answer it with no caller ID. Um, when you uh, know to phone somebody because you can just have a feel that they, they need someone to talk to or you can feel that something is changing or adjusting in someone's life and then you find out that you're correct. This is the seat of... Um, psychic intuition so this isn't the astral plane is an area of our emotions that we all have some kind of access to but for you as an intuitive sensitive yours will be more refined so your ability to link into that part of everything is more refined than the average person now the next level we have is the subconscious this is in the nine vibration this kind of sits in the middle of things and this is how this is the part of our awareness that uh, we are sort of aware of before it becomes fully conscious in the 110 in the physical body now everything below around the the eight and the seven and below this is all part of the physical world. So this is something that we are very aware of. Every human being is, is aware of this part of how we function uh, to, a, to a greater extent. If we then put all these together, so how we look at the physical realms, we can look at it in terms of the Cartman drama triangle. So the Gr Cartman dra drama triangle works on the basis of uh, logic emotion and the physical world but we can also look at it as the victim persecutor and the rescuer so this is the drama that we set about in our lives whether that's in our own personal world or that is how it is experienced in our external world through other people now the next level is how we look at things in terms of guides so when we feel that we're guided that we can feel that our inner awareness is opening up, whether we see that guidance as something that comes from external to ourselves or some kind of internal gui guidance. This is more of the energetic realms. So this is around the five and the four energy here, as you can see on the tree, and that filters down through the soul vibration, which is right in the middle there, through our physical awareness. Sometimes it involves in the drama, in terms of how we then solve drama because sometimes we look for inner guidance in order to solve drama and this is where this comes from now the next level is how you would see things as the angelic realms now a lot of people need um, access to the angelic realms or to feel that they have access to the angelic realms when they're going through a stage of their development of an inner healing process and it's a healing of the heart so all of those things that have wounded and hurt us 
through our life, uh, it comes at some point or another in terms of our spiritual development where we have to allow ourselves that area of healing. Now, as far as the angelic realms are concerned, sometimes in life we haven't had many indications of unconditional love. So we need to learn it. We need to learn how that features and how that exists and what that is as an experience. So when we get into this place of feeling very connected to the angelic realms, quite often this is what's happening. We are learning about how to experience and feel unconditional love. Now that unconditional love has to, in order to understand that, we have to experience it. And therefore, with the angelic realms, this is the point of us starting to feel that we have some kind of experience of what it is to feel things are unconditional. The next layer is around the three and two energy, which is how we then see things as the guru energy. So this is how we see things as how we master things or from higher awareness or or natural truths okay so when something feels like it's a absolute truth and it doesn't cut it's not a feature of someone's opinion and it doesn't feel like a feature of someone's uh, desires it feels like a a wholesome truth so this is the vibration of wholesome truth or how we would like to be able to see it and this is how we then start to filter that through our, our awareness and it filters through into then our physical experience, how tidy these different aspects are. So how tidy we feel on the inner world um, through the tree depends on the quality of that information before, by the time it gets to us in terms of our conscious awareness. This is why internal tidying is so crucial and important because then we get to feel our truth. And not somebody else's truth or the truth that has been filtered to us through the generations, through society. It feels like a wholesome truth. And this is the stage, so the gurus and the ascended master stage of connection where we need to feel that is the stage at which we begin to understand a wholesome truth. And then the 110 at the top of the tree is our connection to what we see as being the life force. So... Some people would say that life force would give that life force a god name of some form or another, or literally call it the life force. But it's the universal intelligence, what we see as the universal intelligence that oversees everything. Now, the tree is uh, divided into two areas, two pillars, which is I would describe them as the waiting and the push. Okay, so this side is. So the three, five, and the eight is where in life it is about waiting. And it doesn't mean that it, it's waiting in terms of procrastination. It's allowing something to develop. And this side is where it is appropriate to push. Okay, so it's appropriate to push through life. We see that in how we, are even come, how we even come into this world, which is there is a waiting time. So for humans, that's nine months. There's a nine month waiting time. And then there comes an appropriate moment for us to push out into the physical world. And that is something that's the theme that applies to life for an entire lifetime. We begin with that and we spend our life going through that theme. Now, if we push too soon, this is where we feel that we come up against something. And if we spend too long waiting, that's when things procrastinate and that's where we feel we get stuck and things go off because we miss the timing. So the enlightenment path is about knowing the correct timing, knowing our correct timing and where that features. So the most direct route through the tree of life is through the consciousness line, which is right through the middle of the tree. Now this, in terms of how I've positioned this, is stages one to seven. Now, as you can see on your screen, you can see that the enlightenment process is the seventh process okay so if you think well does that mean that I shouldn't really be doing this because I've missed out on all the six previously no it doesn't mean that at all because if you are looking from that seven perspective you then get an enlightened view of your whole picture and then you begin to see 
where the things are that you need to focus on in terms of the outcomes that you want and the adjustments you want to make. Whereas if you were working further down the tree and you didn't have that enlightened view of things, that is where you then get to feel unsafe and you start to feel stuck. So the enlightenment path is about you feeling safe and unstuck because, not unstuck as in, not very nice and stuck, it means so you don't feel stuck, is because you've then got a wider view. Can you imagine how life shapes when you can see clearly? You instantly feel safe. Bye for now.